Good evening, good evening. This is Ray Hayes with Global Diversity News. In tonight's mini podcast, we're going to discuss Colin Kaepernick. That's been the the, 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 the national story of today. And uh, well, well, we're not going to talk about him, just the fact that he's sitting uh, in regards to the national anthem. Today, we're going to talk about uh, the fact that Anonymous NFL executives or NFL front office members have been labeling him as a traitor. Uh, one front office exec went on went on to state the following: "I don't want him any. I don't want him anywhere near my team. He's a traitor." Now, everybody's titled to their own opinion in regards to him sitting for the national anthem. Teach his own. I mean, I may feel a different way about the next man, but that's beyond the point. But the fact that he's been labeled as a traitor is somewhat kind of interesting. And hearing these words coming from NFL execs is more intriguing. So, let's dive into this as well. I was uh, on Facebook earlier this afternoon just going through my timeline and I, I ran across this is actually I ran across the article where Leaf Report did the re, did the did the interview with seven NFL executives and they received this information. Uh and it was like I said it was interesting and it was so interesting that I decided to make it my uh topic for the night. But it was just interesting information. But the, the title above the link to the article stated that the NFL needs more diversity in the front offices. And that's why you hear these words coming from the front office execs. Now, I thought that was interesting. And the reason being is because usually you associate front office executive positions uh, not in the NFL usually not being that diversified. So I didn't want to be so naive and not go about looking it up. So what I did, I Google searched it, the demographics of the NFL front offices. Found some interesting information showing that the NFL for over the past few years has been diversifying their front office positions. Uh, Some of the key highlights that I noticed there were... on the report in regards to demographics of the NFL front offices were that there were seven African-American general managers in 2015, which marked the ninth consecutive year with at least five general managers who are people of color. It's kind of interesting. Cool. Okay, let's go on. In the league office, as a result of both hiring and promotions, the number of women and people of color at or above the vice president level continue to increase. The number of people of color at or above the VP level increased from 14 in 2014 to 21 in 2015. Similarly, the number of women at or above the VP level increased from 21 in 2014 to 31 in 2015. So... That tells you right there that they're trying to diversify their front offices. And these comments are not coming from just, well, let's say this. The fact that it may have come from non-people of color, the seven executives who gave these anonymous statements about Colin Kaepernick calling him, quote-unquote, a traitor. They may have come, they may not have come from people of color who are within the NFL front offices. However, let's make this very clear. The reason you hear these comments is not because of the fact that they, the NFL front offices are not diverse. They're, they're not showing diversification. They're plenty. They're not plenty, but there's a good number of front office executives who are people of color. Now, the numbers could steadily change over the years, and I'm sure they will. As you can see, in 2014, the number has steadily increased from to, to 2015. So we cannot argue the fact that, hey, these people are making these comments because basically they don't understand Colin Kaepernick's background or his culture. Granted, most of them, I mean, well, a lot of them do. 
but I did want to make it clear. These comments may not have came from people of color who are within those positions, but the fact that it, the NFL is does not showcase diversity in the front office is not true. They are trying, and I give them a, I applaud them for at least trying, because a lot of people, a lot of companies don't even try; they just forget about it. But to end it for the night, I don't. I'm not going to comment about Colin sitting for the national anthem. He, if he chooses to do it, so be it. It's nothing wrong with it. He's off. He's he's practicing his First Amendment right, and uh, with the veterans for Kaepernick, they're they're showcasing, they're standing with him, letting it be known that the reason that they're fighting is for him to be able to have the ability to do as he pleases. He the ability to be quote unquote free to operate his First Amendment right. So with that being said, thank you for listening to the podcast. Uh, if you did want to read more about the article uh, that I talked about in the podcast, it's uh, on bleacherreport.com. You can find it there. Uh, and it's, like I said, it's about Colin Kaepernick and the NFL front offices uh, giving their opinions of what he's doing. Uh, thank you for listening to the podcast. And please follow us on Twitter at GDN Network. Also, please like our Facebook page, Global Diversity News, and check out our, our website, www.globaldiversitynews.com. This is Ray Hayes. And, uh, have a good evening. I want to end it with the with the Jenna's don't don't let the chief run. I, like I told you, I believe yesterday, I love this song. So, I want to end it with that. Thank you. <laughs>